Hi, my name is Robbie Mall. I've been on a resistant journey to Christianity for the last five years, and I came to believe on Easter of last year. I was raised without religion, but my parents taught me good manners and strong morals for social justice and equality. I was also always encouraged to think for myself. I found joy in the little things. I loved my parents' music, and I was always making movies. As a child, I wanted to harness the magic of storytelling and creativity. But life goes on. Things got harder, I got bullied, my joy ran out. In high school, I took on the persona of a skeptical atheist who was seeking the intellectual downfall of all who are dumb enough to believe in an invisible genie. While I would die on the hill defending the logic and science so present in the created world, I would deny the possibility that it was created. In college, my skepticism turned a little more open-minded when I took a world religions course, which led me to having questions about God. The course assigned me to spend time in a church where I hoped to disprove foolish Christians with my flawless reductionism. I brought my questions with me, but the sermon the pastor preached just so happened to answer every one of them, word for word, before I had a chance to ask them. That was strange. During the sermon, the pastor told a story of when he had heard God, which I knew was impossible. So I went to question this guy, and he warmly introduced himself to me, and I had to ask him about this hearing God thing. Surely the sky didn't whisper sweet nothings into his ear. He told me that he's had a relationship with God for a long time, so it's a little complicated, but if I wanted to try to hear from God, I should start with prayer. He suggested I start with something I'm grateful for, even my favorite color and then I can ask God to reveal himself. Is he really there? And thirdly, I can bring to him my needs. So that night I followed his suggestions and looked to my ceiling, thankful for the color blue, and asked God for two things. If he was real, and if he could help a friend of mine who'd been having nightmares for weeks. Literally the next day, that friend asked to come over and he barged into my room ecstatic about a beautiful dream he had that night. And from then on, the nightmares never came back. He told me that without me asking him, and I saw a prayer answered before my eyes. I knew at that point something bigger than what I understood was going on. With this belief that there could be and was a God who heard prayers, I started to take the idea of religion a little more seriously. I also started to take drugs a little more seriously. Like any hippie, I was after peace and love, truth and justice. I thought LSD was gonna save the world, and I thought everyone just needed to take a hit and chill out. And to tell you the truth, I thought I was on the road to enlightenment. These ideas were convenient for a 20-something looking for affirmation that smoking pot and sitting around is a perfectly enlightened way of living, but attaining enlightenment became the scapegoat that excused selfish behavior that betrayed friends, manipulated lovers, encouraged arrogance, and harmed my body. And then things started to change. In my final semester, I began an internship that brought me to a film set. For the first time since childhood, I felt that whimsical joy. I mean, there is no better place to me on earth than on set. But to my dismay, this was a Christian film, all about Jesus. Why? Why, I asked God. Why bring me to my dream job only to make it about Jesus? Looking back, I see that God used that opportunity to reignite a passion for filmmaking and begin a career in the film and video industries, which I'm still nurturing today. And there I also met my really good friend Nate, who talked with me a lot about Jesus and what's written about him, what he claimed. And I left that set with a new idea of who I thought Jesus was. At that time, I was seeking God through New Age spirituality because what I knew of Christianity was from the news. Scandals, fanatics, insurrections, brainwashed blind believers. But the more I would let Jesus speak for himself through the Gospels, the more I would accept his teachings. I actually started to collect Christian art, paintings and posters from The Last Supper to Jesus Christ Superstar, all this from a non-believer. Now believe me when I say I resisted. I wanted the Bible to be nothing more than ancient wisdom, Jesus to just be another Buddha or Vishnu. 
But the more I tried to prove that worldview, the more I couldn't. I discovered that the amount of evidence for the Gospels as historical events is overwhelming. And I learned that even outside the Bible, the Gospels are acknowledged as eyewitness testimonies to Jesus' life. I could believe that Jesus walked the earth, that he was a great teacher, that crowds flocked to him, and even that he was crucified. But the miracles didn't make any sense. From the Red Sea to the Red Wine, so much of the Bible just seemed implausible. If I were to become a Christian, I needed these stories to make sense, to be human. That's when I was led to read the story that is both the most miraculous and the most human, Luke 24. It opens with the women who find his empty tomb, and nobody believes them. Then the disguised but risen Jesus feigns curiosity about the gloom in Jerusalem. Somebody asks him, what, are you new in town? Then when Jesus appears to his disciples who have just watched him die, they are terrified. And while they sit there shaking, Jesus asks, so you got anything to eat? Not only that, but Jesus fell when he was carrying his cross. He needed help. We know that he slept and he wept and he loved a glass of wine. There is no reason to include these kinds of details in a piece of propaganda. Blind belief is not the goal. Telling a story how it happened is. If the rest of the story happened, the resurrection must have happened too. I realized then that however strange, terrifying, or unlikely it may seem, Jesus of Nazareth was and is the Son of God. In that moment, I prayed for Jesus Christ to enter my life as my Lord and Savior, and I truly experienced him directly. I share with confidence that he gave me a hug, that he welcomed me in, and he was glad to see me. Since then, I've become a different person. He's been changing my heart and desires. I too have died and been resurrected. I'm still seeking peace and love, truth and justice, because Jesus preaches peace. His greatest command is that love supersedes all. His questions lead us to truth, and he was a rebel with a cause for justice. God was patient with me. He answered prayers while I worshiped false gods. He comforted me in times of need. He used my curiosity to bring me to himself. I have met God and been humbled by him. God became human because humanity is precious. He did not come to disprove evolution or disavow science or raise a vulgar picket sign. He came to remind us that we are loved and forgiven and that we should love and forgive no matter the cost. So today we celebrate. He is risen. In the truth of Christ's resurrection, we have hope for eternal life. Knock, and it shall be opened to you.